Cool. Are we back recording? Um, so, so what I was, uh, we'll wait for you. We'll, uh, g- we'll give Yashu a chance to, to, to get in here and I'll, I'll just move forward. Okay. Um, so I'm concerned more, more, more or less with being able to sit down with, uh, with Christians. It seems that in the wake of, um, this ongoing dialogue between the one West camps and catching a little bit of fire from the, from the moderate side, actually catching a lot of fire from the moderate mm-hmm. side. Um, it seems these, these apologists are sort of starting to focus on sort of character attacks, character slander. You know, you like, I'm thinking like, okay, an apologist's job is to defend ideas, but it seems they're sort of, They've gone from, you know, apolog- apologetics to this sort of political mud throwing, and I'm, I'm wondering how does that, how does that fit in with the, with the gospel? You know what I'm it, saying? It doesn't, man. It's um, I don't know, man. It, it must be something in the air, I guess, man. Because uh, for the longest, they they uh, you know, they kind of. They, they was doing pretty good. They was making a distinction, uh, uh, you know. They didn't really address us much, but uh, like I said, man, it might be coming out of boredom. Um, maybe, <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe there's maybe, not many moves left, you know. Maybe right, maybe maybe a moderate has defended somebody, um, and they want to prove that moderates are no different than uh, one West camps when you mm. get to the heart of it. So um, I mean, and, and that's still unwarranted because you know. Uh, we, we, we're now we, it's, it's kind of diverse you can't really put your finger on that i think that's kind of frustrating to them as well you can't put your finger on uh who's a moderate and and, and what they believe and all that but mm. uh it, it's kind of strange because <laughs> go ahead you know you know we're moderates because you call us moderates you know we're not a christian um, so it's almost like the g- generic label for like a non one western almost yes yes i mean it's not um I don't have a problem with it, uh, but it's it's now it's, it seems like it's some kind of narrative going on that uh, moderates are no different, and mm. uh, we are more dangerous I know, <laughs> than one whiz camps. So. I know the uh, the I heard somewhere through the grapevine that someone called us parasites or cowards for not putting what we believe yeah. on yes, paper. Yes, that, that, that's what that's what we wanted. To, I was going to address that, um, mm. and that really kind of shocked me, man, because. Um, you know, some people it didn't shock them because they knew vocab how he was. Uh, uh, but I, I, you know, I, I, used, I listened to vocab his, uh, his little, his, his little um, YouTube. I'm subscribed uh-huh. to his channel, uh-huh. and every now and then I just sit there and I just listen to him. But he does his little, his little live things, his live shows. Right, right. And he's kind of he's pretty reserved. He doesn't talk about matters like that. He, his his focus was his focus was on. The uh the one West camps. Well, it's when, 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 when he got around. I'm sorry, but when he got around the um, the other apologists, it was like the lives were off. Well, <laughs> well it, there's this there's this sort of mystery, right? Like right. they're they're trying to define what a moderate is. See, like, and, and it's really funny to see. Uh, just just to update, you know, a real quick update for, for the brother Yashu who just joined. Yashu, be there. Oh uh, yes, I'm here. Okay, okay, perfect. We uh we um we sw- we're we're discussing the um the the urban apologist trouble with uh the moderate Hebrew Israelite community. Now, <clears throat> it seems there's a little bit I'm detecting a little bit of impatience and you brothers could, you know, maybe weigh in if you agree or disagree. But it seems like all the moves that are happening, you know, with the with the one West camps, right? They were able to spot them. You know, they have the guard. Um, you have camp leaders who have established groups and have defined for the group the tenets of what the group believes. And um, that's easy. It's easy to address. What's more difficult is talking to an individual one on one, and and taking the time to say to understand where they're coming from and i think that's that's that is a a challenge for a 
for Christians when they talk with other Christians even? What do you guys think? Yeah, it kind of, kind of makes you wonder, right? Uh, do, are they really open for dialogue? Uh, do they ah. really want to know what, do they really want to know what we believe? Because, mm. uh, you know, a lot of us have been on record saying what we believe, right? Mm. I, had a, I had a debate uh, a while back on uh, Faith of the God's channel uh, with a Christian. Uh, and I was openly denying uh, the deity of Christ. Mm. I mean, and, and I'm, on, I'm on his um, his his page, you know, just constantly, constantly, you know, defending my position against what what Christians believe. Uh, how, how, e how easy is it to talk with faithful to God? Oh, uh, it, it was it was very very rocky at first. Mm. You know, it was, it was it was it was like right now how you your relationship with him right now. It was just like that. It was it was exactly like that. So, but you know, sometimes you gotta. It, it depends on the person, man. You gotta deal with them on a personal level. Um, I know I've I've done some things um, that you know that surprised them because uh, I know he was. I'm not gonna talk about his business, but you know he was. You know, I helped him out with a little thing with what I had. So, mm. but right now it's um it's it's not bad right now, but you know. Not saying I agree with everything he does right now, but because I definitely don't. But it was oh. difficult at first, man. One second, guys. We got we're getting some uh, some cyber interference here. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> we're gonna have to start up once again, and we're we're gonna pick up right where we left. To hold that thought, Renzo, because uh, okay. are we on Facebook? We're 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 on we're on Facebook for sure, uh, but I gotta um, start a new live because they're they're playing games mm. in this new fascist government we're in where we're quarantined. One second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One second. They don't like they don't like intelligent black men getting together and talking about things. All right, here we go. Let's see. Dressing concerns part two. <clears throat> Create broadcast. <clears throat> you gonna send a new ID and a password? No, we're still on the stream. You guys are still on. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to transfer the Zoom into StreamYard and then stream to Facebook from, from StreamYard. All right. All right. Add to stream. Check, check. Okay. Check, check. All right, here we go. All right, we live, live again, part two. Part two, let me check this. Uh, what? Hey, hey, yo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Facebook deleted the video we just made, but I got it recorded, so we don't know. Uh, <laughs> they straight up. Let's start that again. They straight up deleted the video, bro. It's all good. Oh, snaps. They just ended the live on the... Uh, they just ended the live I just started. Wow. What? <laughs> yeah, they 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 started that back up, huh? So they you know, they was deleting all posts about the uh the little pandemic that was going on now. Yeah. They like they they t whatever words, whatever they got like tag words. If the tag right. words come up then they <laughs> Wow. Oh, that's wild. Cause they got people uploading videos about coronavirus now. Right, right. Yep. Wow, this is crazy. Let me see if I can. I'm, I'm surprised Ron Shields, uh, his video is still up. He did one yesterday. Oh man. Oh yeah, on, on Facebook, huh? Yeah, yeah. Let me see what's going on here. Let me see if I could. Uh... Ooh, this is crazy. Yes, because I was looking on Facebook to see if uh, the new video you started was there, but I never saw it. Say it again. 
I know I was looking on Facebook to see the new video you started, but I never saw it. Man, they just deleted it. We had like 12 people. We had like some, a bunch of people in there. Wow, this this is crazy. Let me see if I could uh and broadcast. Bad, it was bad stream yard. Let me see. Snap that mess. That junk is gone. Um, we're we're live right now, or we're on we're on Zoom. No, we're not live right now. We uh, okay, okay. Cool. Streamyard is lock. Streamyard is blocking me from living right now. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> the website, like, not only is the, is the Zoom. See, what's crazy is, I had hey, a man. I had like a four hour Zoom. I had a four hour Zoom with with Marcus Webb and Ron Shields, and it was it was cool. Everything was straight. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, Zoom is like, yeah, you got 10 more minutes. I'm like, what? Like, so then we had to upload another um, Zoom meeting. And then um, and then when I got the Zoom together, the second Zoom together, Streamer tells me that the video is having trouble broadcasting. But I look, I'm checking Facebook from my phone. And this mug, the whole the, the says it says video is no longer available. <laughs> hey man, no Christian the Powers is praying, man. <laughs> 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 you, gotta, you better be careful, man. They did that. They Ron Shields got caught up like that too. Wow. Oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I think I think Never Nitty is still sacrificing chickens. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> What we got here? Oh, snaps. And we have four, we have 54 views just in that amount of time. Wow, this is wild. Let me see. Um, create a broadcast. Let's see if we can go through uh, okay. YouTube. And if YouTube <clears throat> doesn't work, if this happens again, we'll just convene for the night. This is crazy. Uh, we'll go wrong, go wrong. Addressing Christian concerns. Oh, it won't let you broadcast on Facebook. It's not letting me go on Facebook. I'm gonna try the wrong. I'm gonna try going into the Rumble Room channel, and then we'll share it. <clears throat> yeah, but it seems like Streamyard is giving me issues. So Streamyard is really the culprit. Let me see. Broadcast. <clears throat> Create broadcast. Would it not would it not be easier to just go or uh, do it on Facebook Live? So we were on Facebook Live. Oh, well, you mean live straight from Facebook? Live straight out of Facebook? Yeah. I I could screen share it. From Facebook, I, I'm really trying to get it recorded on this Zoom. When you put it, when I put it into Facebook, I don't know. I always have trouble downloading stuff. From, I've never been able to download a video. It's been years since I've been able to download a video from Facebook. Let me try hmm. this, and we'll, and we'll try. We'll try your way. Hold on. All right, here we go. Entering. <clears throat> Wow. All right. What up, y'all? It's your boy, Pac Roy K. Perez Yao from the Rumble Room. I'm still with my guests, uh, Renzo Roberson and Yashu Ben Dawu. This is part part two. We'll call this part two of addressing Christian, uh, the Christian concern for, the, for moderate Israelites. Uh, give me one second. We're going to... Um, we're gonna see if we can share this to uh, to Facebook. <clears throat> All right. Is this is this Zoom thing not a, a reliable platform? Because it seems like 
You said it only gives you 40 minutes, right? No, Zoom is Zoom is an excellent platform. It's been an excellent platform thus far. But what yeah. you have is you have all these all these online software have uh, they have back doors. So you know, national security could could do whatever it is they want to do. Or you have individuals who just understand the program and can hack it. You also have uh, artificial intelligence that sort of that will target you know, certain, certain meetings, certain individuals. And so all that is a possibility when, you, um, when we're dealing with, with, the, with, these, with these platforms. And so. Wow. All right, here we go. Let me see. Sharing this to... I'm just sharing the link around. So if you guys want to, um, if you guys are concerned about this, about this, people getting to these link, this link, it's on my Facebook wall right now. So just in case, just so you guys know. It's also going straight into the, uh, the YouTube. Yes, sir. All right. All right. So I'm just going to monitor. Let me see. Let me see if I can go back to YouTube on my phone. <clears throat> All right. Wow. Okay. Here we go. So this is this is cool because it's gonna it's gonna contact all the uh, all the subscribers, um, and a lot of the subscribers come from Rumble Room anyway. All right. So um, we'll just we'll just continue our discussion here, and I'll if if it if Streamyard gives us some trouble, then we'll. Uh, will make the necessary adjustments. <clears throat> but um, so what we were, before we were interrupted uh, by, the, um, by the little technical difficulty, we were discussing um, why, why Christian apologists um, are choosing the route of, of slander. We're finding a lot, lot of slander we're finding a lot of mudslinging, a lot of, you know, I don't believe what you say. And the first disagreement, the first, um, you know, disagreement that, that, that they have or the first disagreement with, with the character or with word choice, they, they sort of claim offense and they sort of take it and, and, and run with it for days without ever really concentrating on the, the, the real issues. Um, let's take the symposium, for example. You had a lot of apologists on there um, for a long time talking about what they don't like about Israelites versus discussing the, 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 the controversy of the doctrine. We have what I don't like them do, what they do that we don't like. It really sounded like a group therapy for a while. Uh, were you guys able to catch the, um, catch the symposium? Or, Renzo, were you able to catch the symposium? Yes, sir. I watched the whole thing in full, man. And um, I think the very essence of that symposium was a bit hypocritical. Mm. And I say that I say that by, um, you know, it was said that Hebrew Israelism is unbiblical because it's ethnocentric, not Christ-centric. Mm. And I find I find that a bit uh, hip hypocritical because uh, vocab had a guy uh, he promoted on his channel. You know, gave a lecture about ah. uh, you, ethnic, ethnic and cultural identities, right? Wow! What and was man, and and and, and, the, and the, it, you know, it, it was it was crazy, man. Because um, when I saw it, I was like, man, how is this any different than what we we are preaching? What we are talking about? Are you referring to uh, what was it? Uh, Cleaver, Cleaver. I, I can't think of his name, but he there he, was there was two. I think there was a guy named Brandon Cleaver, and I think there was a guy named Russell Berry. I, th I think it was Russell Berry. Go ahead. Uh huh. I think it was him. You know, he 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 named it acknowledging ethnic and cultural identities, uh -huh. and then he says he says becoming a Christian doesn't revoke or replace one's ethnic identity; it redeems it. Hmm. Mm. Now think about think about that. Now how is that how is that any different than what than what we 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 preach or uh, what we talk about? I want to say preach. I want to say what we talk about. 
Right. We have, I, find we, that, I, find that, I find that a bit hypocritical, man. And right, we, I was waiting for somebody to say something about it, defend it, but uh, to no avail. Right, because uh, there was there was a few of us that that talked about it in the rumble room, and, and it seemed like Christians avoided it like the like the plague. Yashu, were you able to catch that uh, the symposium? I did, I did. It, you know, it was an eye opener. Huh. Oh, yeah. well, well, what was your take on it? Well, like about vocab and what what Eric Mason and then what what they're standing for. I, I mean, I I would have a whole lot to say about that, but. You know, to me, I, I look at it as a positive thing for the Hebrew community because, you know, a, a lot of the things that they were saying, especially when they were pointing out a lot of the things that Hebrews was, uh, that Hebrews, because most Hebrews are from the Christian church. And so a lot of the things that they were saying is one of the reasons why a lot of people left the church and, and you know, went into the, his, uh, the Hebrew Israelite movement. Mm. And to these guys, they look at the Hebrew Israelite movement as if it's a religion. It's not a religion. Christianity is a religion. The Hebrew, the Hebrew Israelite thing, is an identity. It's it's, it's basically who you are. Yeah. So, and right, uh, right. Renzo, you said you you brought up a very uh, salient point, and um, it was something that I um, that I had been I had been meaning to bring up. Uh, and this ties directly in what 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 you're saying, uh, Yashub, about religion. Well, we we don't we don't we don't have a religion. It's it's our culture. Um, but it seems that from the Christian mindset, that division exists. And I'm not sure if they're doing it on purpose, or or because because they see things from as a religion, like Christianity. Christianity to the slave is not really the, the the African slaves culture. It was sort of imposed upon upon African slaves, but for to for Israelites, um, there's no di- there's no distinction between. I mean, our eth- we don't have to choose ethnicity or an ethnocentric nationalism over our spirituality because, you know, according to our our the covenant. The Sinai Covenant, which was an ethnocentric covenant, it dictated our spirituality. Right. Exactly. And I'm I'm wondering exactly. why this false dilemma. Why why do we have to choose? Yeah. Right. Any ideas on that? Any thoughts? Um. Uh, you know. Um. I I would say this, man. Um. They, you know, we could have. Because, you know, they they say we can't make a distinction between an ethnic claim and a religious claim. Mm. But it seems like they can't do that either. Because when mm. we claim an ethnicity, they equate that with, with, the, with a religious claim. We're not saying it's a religious claim. We're saying it's an ethnic claim. Right. So if, I want to, if I want to find right. out, if I found out that, you know, my heritage is in West Africa, Af- West Africa had a possible connection to the Israelites, why wouldn't I want to explore that? Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, right. I, and if I find convincing if I find convincing evidence that it's possible or plausible, and and what's what, why why are you still equating that with a religious claim? Mm, right. You had any thoughts on that, Yashu? Yeah. Uh the uh the identity thing, you know I mean, for most of us black people, man, we, you know, we're coming from slavery. Our whole identity has been dictated to us. And so you kind of actually see that in that symposium we was talking about. Mm. You know, the, the way vocab, you know, the way vocab, you know, you know it's, it's just crazy how a lot of us black people, like, we don't see it. But, you know, vocab, like, our community, oh, Lord. Like our whole community is in trouble. And a lot of Christians, they just don't, they, it's like for some reason, they don't realize that they are from these communities, like these, this, this community that's in trouble. Vocab is from a whole totally other ethnicity and community. So when they're talking about even their Christianity or their religion, what, you know, you, it, it's, 
is different. Like everybody's seeing things from a different eye. So like the reason why I yeah. Go ahead. Uh, well, I was because I, I think there's some special things that are that our our beliefs address, and I think it really kind of frustrates. I know vocab is frustrated. Period. I mean, the guy has gone on record. He's talking about. <clears throat> what, what's this man said? He said he doesn't want people to like the Israelite community. Um, mm. as he, he was reviewing a study that talked about how many people are, 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 tr- are attracted and are, are sort of, um, for the lack of a better term, converting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't want to say converting, I, I, but, I really, but really awakening. Yeah, I talked about mm. it, you know, for the listeners after the live, go ahead. Mal one. All right, so this, the spirit of Mal One. It's a video on the YouTube channel. I encourage everybody to go and check it out. You can see mm-hmm. him doing this. But but the thing is, this 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 book, what we believe as Israelites, it speaks to it speaks to the Negro spirit. It speaks to our mind because you know we came as we came as captives to this country. We were we were stripped. We were stripped of our culture and our identity. And along as, as the years went on, nations across the world, you know, Negroes in their in their um, respective um, countries that they were sent to, we had to deal with people mocking us for not having a history. And now finally, there's an answer, and we have that answer. And and now there's there's this. This, you know, I want to uh, steal a line from Star Wars. This is uh, d- dark. D- the dark force rises, and the light to, in the light to meet it. Like we have, <laughs> we have, and it's really kind of flip flop for us, right? Because we ha- we finally found this light, and then this 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 dark force, right? Just, just that is that that has the face of Christianity on it, and urban and a white quote unquote urban apologist. He's really sort of leading this movement against something that's really doing a lot of good for for black people. I mean, you know, when we talk about the ills of our own community, you know, this is this is changing brothers' lives. You know what I mean? And he and and you have an individual who wants to stop it. Right. Whether whether they agree with the the, the methodology or not, it's uh it it, it kind of gets brothers off the street of. Uh, they're not really uh, doing what they used to. Uh, it's a more, it's, they're more focused. Mm. But you know, um, the vocab is, Malone says, "Try again." <laughs> he said, "Try again." Yeah, I mean, sometimes you know, some some apologists they they got that that uh, one size fits all um, uh, doctrine, uh-huh. um, evangel evangelism, what they call it. And yeah. It doesn't work for everybody. I mean, you got to start somewhere, right? Mm. And some people, some people's walk may start different in different places. Mm. Uh, but you know, I, I don't. I want to touch on something that you said earlier, Pat. Go ahead, bro. You said something about the, you know, you you kind of you kind of in you know introduce scripture into it. Yes. And sir. it was said on the symposium that the reason why they have a major problem with it is because we're using scripture to justify it. Oh, right. So I just want you know, I want to clarify that uh, they don't like yeah. they don't like that we have a good reason to believe. Right, that. right. But when you look at uh, the days of slavery, um, the slaves injected themselves into scripture all the time. You know, they used <laughs> the Exodus narrative, to, you know, um, exactly. to, to you know, to display the situation. To they fu- used to, the Exodus to narrative fight. for everything they did. Oh, you saying the sl- the sl- the slave masters used that to to justify what they did, or the or no, 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 no. The the slaves themselves used the Exodus narrative to find to, inspiration, uh, right, 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 to define the situation they're in now. Mm-hmm. Now it was uh, he had a show uh, maybe three weeks ago with uh, another pastor on there. I think his name Isaiah Robertson. Uh. Uh, he was explaining. He he kind of brought that point up that the you know the slaves. Uh, use the Exodus narrative. They was uh, familiar with the Exodus narrative, but they never really identified themselves with the people in the book. Mm. And mm. They, 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 it was, it was, it wasn't an ethnic claim. It was a, it was a spiritual claim. But I think mm-hmm. that's a, a distinction without a difference, right there. Yeah. Even, even if, even if he's right, 
you can say that uh, <laughs> you think they would have been opposed to b believing they're Israelites? Right. I don't think so. You know what I mean? So it's it's uh they have a problem with us using scripture to make an ethnic claim, but nobody... and, and even like it, I mean, and it goes. It's almost like there's on the other side of the coin. You also have these slave masters who were also using those the scriptures you, to justify exactly slavery. Exactly. They was using the scripture to to justify their slavery. Uh, even 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 the uh, slave was 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 viewing the slave masters as an Egyptian. Mm, yeah, you know what I mean. So, they, so that's that was that was a that was motivating for them to get, you know, uh, start a movement. You know, you know but but it, it but the hope for them. but the urban apologists are mad that we are act we actually found a a positive inspiration. Of mm -hmm. We have a reason to that that support exactly. our, you know what we're inspired and 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 exactly. it's not like it's not like we're pulling this out of thin air like we have reasons for what we believe and I think that's part of the frustration. Yashub, you want to weigh in on this? Yes. Uh, another reason why I think that they're mad is because if you look at the people that they call the moderates, a lot of the people that they call or uh, the people that would be identified as moderates, a lot of these people are just regular, clean cut people that come out of church. Do, you know, some dudes that are still dressed in suits and, you know, that used to stand at pulpits or, or you know, regular church members. Mm. And, you know, for the fact that, and, and those guys are drawing their own crowd, but also, it's also a threat to them also, because now you can't, uh, 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 come with that cartoon Christianity no more. Like now you have to get to the real deal. Mm. Hebrews do that. Hebrews actually do research. Hebrews actually do study. So even when I listen to some of the debates, even with some of the campers like Sakari, I've seen Sakari eat these Christian apologists up because <laughs> these guys don't know scriptures. And, and, and real, real study quick, scriptures. Yeah, real, real quick, real quick. Shout out, shout out to, because uh, we've seen a lot of this go down on um, Bro Abaya Adonai's Inside the Nation Radio. I want to, I want to send a quick shout out to Bro Abaya Adonai and Inside the Nation Radio. Yeah, cool uh, brother, cool brother. The the bro and also the uh, the brothers from from Sakari, the bro, bro Yatab Darash and Deacon Aka. All the uh, all the uh, uh, Sakari dudes that sort of kind of gave us those those moments, um, <clears throat> yeah. We, we you got these you got these um, these camps, we, Israelites, moderates, and camps giving giving uh, apologists problems. Go ahead, yeah. Go ahead, Yashu. Yeah. Now, yeah. But that's basically you know that's basically the problem, and they see that as a problem. And another thing I noticed too, even with some of the debates. That's the reason why, and this is the reason why I say that it's an, a, a real good opportunity for Hebrews. The reason why is, is because, you know, Hebrews got the foundation. Hebrews actually have the real word and what the word say. So even when I was listening to that symposium, when they were saying that, oh, they're twisting scriptures. Okay, well, if Hebrews are twisting scriptures, so the opportunity for Hebrews is, is this. So if they could have like, live debates, moderated debates, right? Mm -hmm. Because when the, bait, the debates are not moderated or when a Hebrew go on their platform, you know, uh, uh, Pac, we talk about this all the time, mm. what they do with scriptures. They create stuff out of thin air. Like they create doctrines and imaginations out of thin air. They don't stick to the script. When it, get, when it gets tough, when, when, when the Hebrews paint them in the corner, you see some pretty wild things. I always, I always yes. say, I always say, oh, they're they're trying to take us to crazy town. <laughs> they're trying to take us on a ride. <laughs> they're trying to get. They're trying to take us on a ride on the crazy train to Crazyville. You know. So yeah. Go ahead, bro. Yeah. So so what they need to so so what the Hebrew community and the Christian apologist community, if the Christian apologist community would agree to it. What they need to do is, okay, if you have a problem with the Hebrew Israelite community, then come together, uh, have these kind of debate, moderated debates, mm, mm. in a controlled atmosphere where you can mm. actually bring out the information and present it to the people what you believe. Because it really shouldn't be any fighting in the first place. Because the majority of the people, even in the Hebrew Israelite community, are Christians. 
Mm. And a lot of them believe the exact same that the same things that uh, are, 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 are a lot of Christians believe. But mm -hmm. what is a lot? What is a problem with a lot of Christians is the identity thing. And of course, it's going to be an identity thing. And the identity thing is going to mean something different to different people. But Vocab Malone, Vocab Malone could care. He definitely don't want black people identifying as these Hebrews. Why? Because they have controlled the narrative and they have dictated to black people all these years who they were to keep black people at the bottom. So of course he's not going to uh, uh, want to, you know, he don't want black people to know their identity. Right. So the if black I people that I saw on that panel, those yeah. guys were sitting there like, I mean, and I was listening, I was looking at them and I was looking at their face and reading their expressions. <sighs> Man, bro. Anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, yeah, no. Um, no, it, it's it's interesting that it's interesting that uh, vocab has, uh, you know, his channel's looking really black for the past yes. for the past. I want to say month and a half. Like, you know, it, it's it, uh, what well, Black History Month is over. But but I understand that you know that we we know that vocab calls himself a, an urban apologist and. Um, you know, there's all sorts of reasons why he might have even taken that direction. Why he? I mean, we know vocab has an affinity. Just a quick, just a quick heads up. We got five minutes on this recording. Um, when the five minutes are up, I'm probably going to end up having to send you guys a new meeting and a new password. So just a heads up. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. But but addressing vocab, we know his affinity for black culture, right? So up until now, if we think about it, up until now, vocab is you know, he, he, he fashions himself after black men. He tries to speak like black men. He consorts with black men. And, and for the most part, he can get as close as he thinks that he is, right? Like he can sort of convince himself like, yes, I'm just like them. But when you have a, a population of black men that says we are Israelites and, and, and you are not, <clears throat> We, so we have something that vocab can't can't be and he can't get to and it's just it, it seems a little bit like it really kind of you, you know you know the connection I'm making like oh yes absolutely it's it's yeah. something he can't he can't be and it's almost like it tugs at his at his European spirit right well his his presupposition is that we're not Israelites uh, from the get go. Right. right. So when you uh, uh, when you look at his uh, his initial testimony, uh, and I could be wrong that uh, he was insulted by uh, by uh, you know Israelites in the street, and that's mm. what kind of motivated him to get started. Uh, you know, uh, trying to refute Hebrew Israelism. Uh, oh, he got his feelings hurt. Now's why he. <laughs> well, that's what that's what it was. It was it was it was talked about a long time ago. Um, he said he had a bad experience. Uh, it, I think it was that, or either he had some friends come back to him, asking about uh, these guys standing on the street corner. And uh, I think I think uh -huh. I, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I think he was insulted. Uh, him and his uh, his family. <laughs> so that's what started. That's what kind of that's what kind of created the monster right there. <laughs> you know they say every yeah, villain man. every villain has a story right 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 so yeah he's um you know vocab to me man it's kind of hard to gauge man i don't you know sometimes i question his intentions you know sometimes he can seem mellow and cool you know and sometimes you want to believe what he says sometimes that you know he's not out to persecute anybody but you know I, from from what's going on recently you know i just I don't know, man. I'm, I'm skeptical. Well, well, he's a he's a he's a politician, right? He's a he he's he's a he's an educated dude. He knows how to he knows how to hack, act halfway decent. Um, but the but some of the most like smartest and well mannered people can be some of the most vicious people. But you'll never know, right? right. You re, it's really kind of just looking at the fruits. I think he showed his real face. Um, He's showed showed us his real face enough times to really kind of, um, you know, you know the the verdict is out. Um, Eric Mason, 
We mm. got a guy who is uh, – <clears throat> he said he's been on record saying the Sabbath is boring. Uh, this, this is a gentleman who, uh, this is a gentleman who advocates, uh, the use of gun security in his church. Um, wow, it's, a, it's all about what you're making, right? <laughs> and, he said it's boring. And, and, and this gentleman is, uh, this gentleman is, uh, a quote unquote, um, well, he calls himself woke. He's the spearhead, he spearheads the woke church movement in urban Philadelphia. And he's right, advocate. Hey, go ahead. Hey, 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 Pac, I, I wanna I wanna stop right there. Now he says he's part of the woke movement, right? Uh what what do you ask him what he think about uh white evan evangelicals, what they think about the woke movement. Well that's interesting because it seems that from the conservative side, we got less than a minute. This we might have to uh we might have to um, fire back up, but just to uh, answer your question, I may have to answer it on the other side of the break. Um, okay. It's interesting that you, we have, uh, from, the, from the conservative side, we have uh, Dr. James White, who kind of criticizes him, right? Mm-hmm. He's the main antagonist of the woke movement. <laughs> and like, <laughs> and, and how ironic is this? How ironic that, you know, you, an individual like Eric Mason, who sort of his main uh, wave is like bringing Christians to the intersection of, you know, socio the socio politics, you know, mm -hmm. race um, and religion. He brings them all to that point, and he receives mm -hmm. criticism. But then, Eric Mason.